Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Immortality. In the last episode, we watched the final clip from Minsky, which means we are good to make a start on the third and final act. Two of everything. I actually already have all of the clips from this film, so we really can just sit back, relax, and try and put all of the puzzle pieces together. Now, at this point in the timeline, it's 1998. So yeah, it's it's been over 20 years since the one took possession of John Durick. Now, I believe they said in the um in the about section of this game, John became quite a well-renowned director in his own right. So, Let's see what Here's he was up to. Test. From the beginning, if you please. Okay, so the motion control race is going to play back what we do now. First, Naomi's going to play Sarah. Amy, you play Anne. When we composite it, Naomi's performance will disappear. Story of my life. Barry, what do you uh, think of the dress? Swanky. Mm -hmm. It's a vintage Dior. Does it suoth the town? Makes her stand out. Yeah, when, when Lee Lockwood sees a surprised look on Anne's face, she says, women need a certain kind of attention, especially as they age. Not all women, but the type of woman I am. And what type exactly is that? That's Lee's line. Okay, let's go. Tell them I'm dangerous. Compositing tests take one X. Action. Lee wants to know why you stopped seeing him. People always want to know why. Has it ever occurred to you that you're not in your right mind? <laughs> Who's to say? I'm in no position to judge myself. Nothing interests me less than explanations. It means nothing to you what my feelings are? You look older. You'd like for me to hate you, wouldn't you? Well, I can't, and I won't. So what should I tell him? Tell him I'm dangerous. Cut. Let's switch and go again. Amy, that was great. I hope John is paying you twice for this. <gasps> John, I'm supposed to pay me. <laughs> you think it'll work? Sure. You got Sarah and Ann, Lee Lockwood and Bob Dean, two murders, two of everything. Biblical. What's the word? Thunderbird. What's the price? Two bits twice. Okay. Okay, so he was working on a film called Tell Him I'm Dangerous. And then, okay, very quickly, very quickly. That's the woman. That's, that's the woman. This one over here. This is the one that um the other jumps into. Give me a minute, what? Okay. So the motion control race is going to play back what we do now. First, Naomi's going to play Sarah. Amy, you play Amy. Amy. When we composite it. Okay, Amy. Amy. Right, okay, so he was, he was working on Tell Him I'm Dangerous. The, I, I presume it was the producer. Or some, someone involved. You know, it has, oh, two of everything. And that gives him the idea. Okay. Okay. And then here, yet a year later, Marissa is back. All right, test read for two of everything. Rest in peace, tell him I'm dangerous. I'm too dangerous for everything. All right, Marissa, you will be reading Heather. Amy, you're reading Isabel. John wrote the part for me, so give me any tips. Heather is you when you were younger. Maria, you as you are now. Taken to extremes for dramatic effect. She's greeted by the beautiful Isabella, 40s, wearing a white blouse and long dress. She has the vague continental accent that could put her from anywhere. Maria, it's such a pleasure to finally meet you and Isabella Hessenberger. Isabella kisses Heather on both cheeks, squeezing her upper arms approvingly. Heather smiles, slightly uncomfortable. So healthy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Would you like something to eat? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. I ate on the plane. Well, have a drink. 
A maid with a tray of champagne food steps forward. Isabella passes one to Heather, takes one for herself. Thank you. This place is so beautiful. Did you do all of this yourself? B. Isabella looks at her, eyes narrowed, and Heather thinks she's messed it up already. Then Isabella smiles. Um, no. <laughs> Ford Hansen did most of it. Do you know him? He just did Calvin Klein's Miami home? I don't know Bort, but uh, I do know Calvin Klein. I have some of his underwear. Isabella laughs politely. <laughs> well, shall I show you around? I would love that. The bodyguard follows with the bag as Isabella shows her two interior Hessenberg residence living room. A massive living room with a white grand piano and a view of the city. Isabella runs her hand along the piano. This is beautiful. Perhaps you can perform for us here later tonight. I'd love to, uh, but my piano skills are a little rusty. We'll have someone play for you. She's sizing Maria up with her eyes. Andrew was surprised you said yes. He was convinced something like this would be beneath you. Oh, well, there's no shame in doing something for the money. Michelangelo worked on commission. That would make Mr. Hessenberg the Pope? <laughs> Andrew is no Pope. <laughs> and you are no Michelangelo. I mean that as a compliment. All of Michelangelo's women look like men with tits stuck on them. <laughs> and scene. Well, oh. Amy, that was fabulous. Should we uh, go get something to eat, and then after this, see how you do with Maria? Okay. There are a couple of things I want to say about that scene. Um, I'm, I'm going to play it from the beginning again, because I... Th there were a couple of things I noticed. All right, test read for two of everything. Rest in peace, tell them I'm dangerous. I'm too dangerous for everything. All right, Marissa, you will be reading Heather. Amy, you're reading Isabella. John wrote the part for me, so if you need... So clearly John likes this actress. He had her in Tell Him I'm Dangerous. He's now written this part especially for Amy. So clearly, clearly he likes this actress. Maybe they're friends, maybe they're partners. Maybe he's just like, hey, she's super talented and I want her in all of her films. Maybe, maybe she's like, um... Devecki Studios and Ashlyn Diaz. I hope I'm pronouncing her surname correctly. Um, but yeah, Ash Ashlyn has been in like all of their FMVs. Maybe, maybe Amy is like that with John. He's like, hey, she's my good luck charm. She has to be in all of my films. Either way, you know, he's he's written this part, especially for her. What comes next is interesting. Amy tips. Heather is you when you were younger, Maria, you as you are now. Amy isn't playing Heather or Maria, she's playing Isabella. Marissa is the one playing Heather, and Isabella was calling Heather Mar Maria throughout that scene. I... This, this direction, it's being directed towards the wrong person. That is incredibly interesting. Also, who is Maria? I, I did notice in the Tell Him I'm Dangerous um, clip, Naomi's performance was going to disappear when the film was put together. That's what they said. So it, it made it sound like that was a, um, a multi-role piece. You know, one actor playing two roles. So they might be doing that here. Give it... There! They, they did that a lot during this. Both um, John and Marissa turned their pages in unison. And Amy is a beat off. Okay, so the one. The one. Has somehow split themselves in two. But there is weirdness. That. I'm gonna go back to it. What Marissa says, it should be John directing it towards Marissa. Heather is you when you were younger, Maria, you as you are now. Yeah. Th this makes no sense. This makes no sense. It should be John directing this at Marissa. Marissa is looking at John, so she's directing this towards him. John isn't playing Heather or Maria either. 
Okay. Taken to extremes for Germanic attack. That is, and they're turning the pages in unison. Isabella, 40s, okay, I, I don't think we need to watch it again, but there was. No, no, no. I, I don't want to go into the vibration just yet. Amy's face there at the end. Amy's face there at the end. That's that's a look of concern. That's a look of like, oh, I don't, I don't know about this. Something is concerning me. I guess you know. At, at one stage, Marissa. If if John puts Amy in all of his films, you know, either, either because you know he likes her as an actress, their lovers, their friends, whatever. Marissa is a threat to that. Marissa at one time was John's ingenue. And obviously, I, I would assume that Amy doesn't know about the whole, you know, immortal god creatures. I'm going to assume she is ignorant of that. But from, from her perspective, Marissa was John's original muse. She was his inspiration. Now suddenly she's back. Looking as good as ever. I've noticed John has, um, he has greys in his beard. He's aged. Marissa hasn't. So from, from Amy's perspective, like, damn, this, this woman he used to be romantically involved with has come back. She's looking as good as she ever did. Dear Lord, give me, give me the number of her plastic surgeon. He might replace her. That could be what she's thinking there. Like, is is my position as his partner, as his lucky charm, as a regular collaborator in, in films, is my position under threat because this lady is back? That, ooh. No, yeah, let's, oh. Shall we get something to eat and then come? Oh, no, no, I want the beginning. There we go. Okay. So yeah, she's she's had to split herself in two. But her primary focus is Marissa. Then again. Then again, I can't say I'm surprised by that. The one genuinely seemed to love Marissa. As, as much as she could love. As much as she understands the concept of love. John was a mistake. She got pissed at him, she got angry, and so she ate him and became him. She wasn't thinking clearly, she wasn't thinking logically. She, it, it seemed like she missed Marissa. I, just, I wonder how she's been able to do this. I, ooh. Test read for two of everything. Rest in peace, tell mom, dangerous. Dangerous for everything. Marissa, you'll be reading Maria, and uh, Amy will be reading Isabella. John wrote the part for me, so if you need any tips. Heather is you when you were younger, Maria when you're sure now. Taking to extremes for dramatic. I have to. Oh. I'm loving this. I'm loving this. I'm loving the empty seat in the middle. I... Oh... Do I... So it, it seems like... It, it seems like there are certain things, like the, like the sinking of the pages. Okay, that's not exactly noticeable. But... We're seeing... We're seeing little cracks, like the one not realizing who she's speaking as. John should have been directing, Heather is you as this and Maria is you as this. John should have been directing that towards Marissa and instead it comes out of Marissa's mouth. That is a crack. That is a the one cannot necessarily control who is saying what. That is a small crack. And that crack is going to get bigger. 
storytelling tells us that that is going to get bigger. Otherwise, this would be a very boring story. And, you know, the, the one was able to control two of them at the same time. And, um, yeah, she succeeded. Nothing happened. The end. That would be a very boring story. That is the initial, like, okay, something is going to go wrong. She can't exactly control which is doing what. She gets confused at times. I, oh. I mean, we have seen, we have seen shots where Marissa is bleeding. Bleeding from the head. That, oh. I like this. She is greeted by the beautiful Isabella Fordens, who wears a white blouse and a long dress. She has a very continental accent that could put her from anywhere. Maria, such a pleasure to finally meet you. I'm Isabella Essenberg. Isabella kisses Heather on both cheeks, squeezing her upper arms approvingly. Heather smiles, slightly uncomfortable. So healthy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Would you like something to eat? I'm fine, thanks. I ate on the plane. Well, have a drink. A maid with a tray of champagne flutes steps forward. Isabella passes one to Heather, takes one for herself. Thank you. This place is so beautiful. Did you do all this yourself? A beak. Isabella looks at her eyes narrowed, and Heather thinks she's messed it up already, but then Isabella smiles. No. Ford Hansen. Did most of it. Do you know him? He just did Calvin Klein's Miami home? I don't know Bort, but I know Calvin Klein. I have some of his underwear. Isabella laughs politely. Shall I show you around? I would love that. The bodyguard follows the bag as Isabella leads us to interior. Hessenberg residence living room, a huge living room with a grand piano and a view of the city. Isabella runs her hand along the piano. This is beautiful. Perhaps you can perform for us here later tonight. Oh, I'd love to. My piano skills are a little rusty, though. We'll have someone play for you. She's sizing Maria up with her eyes. Andrew was surprised you said yes. He was convinced something like this would be beneath you. Oh, well, well. There's no shame in doing something for the money. Michelangelo worked on commission. That would make Mr. Hessenberg the Pope. <laughs> Andrew is no Pope. And you are no Michelangelo. I mean that as a compliment. All of Michelangelo's women look like men with tits stuck on them. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> Amy, that was fabulous. Shall we uh, get something to eat and then come back and see how you do with Maria? Interest in this version. In in this version, Amy is just smiling up at um up at the one. In the real version, she was looking at Marissa quite nervously. I oh. Oh, I'm I'm intrigued as to what this movie is. Obviously, we have the multi-role aspect, you know, Marissa playing two roles at the same time. From the sound of it, it, it sounds like it could be a heist movie. You know, two, two identical people are working together to get one over on this rich guy, perhaps. That's, that's my early guess. I don't really know anything about two of everything, but that's just from the sound of it, it sounded a bit like this could be a heist movie. I don't know. Hmm. Now... Is this going to bring us into... Okay, so it's bringing us into the original scene. Okay. Okay. I... Ooh. Interesting. All right, read for our scene one through nine. We'll just go straight through. Over black. Final check in 20. Group three to the stage. Move your asses. Interior, backstage corridor, MBA awards. Harry producer opens door into an empty dressing room. Fuck. Closes it. Paper on door reads, Maria. Back into the corridor and jogs. Stage manager going the other direction, followed by backing dancers and crew. Producer's walkie spits in his ears. He fights through the crowd. This is the biggest night of your life, so I hope you took your vitamins. The entire motherfucking world is watching. Backing singers in bright colors harmonize as they shuffle past. 
It's the motherfucking music video award. Producer sees a production assistant, Sue, he recognizes. Motions her over. Maria is MIA. She needs to be mic'd and ready. Go check the second floor, quick. Will's up in 20. On it. Jog's off. Fuck. Exterior, Hollywood Hills Mansion, pool, same. The sparkling swimming pool of a luxury Hollywood estate. It's lit up for a party, but only one person is there. Mark, 25, an underwear model type. He lounges at the poolside, eyes closed. Bare feet and long legs step up to the poolside. Mark opens his eyes. Nice. Ready for the show? Hell yes. Inside the show? Can't we just tape it? Are you kidding? I want to watch live. Kicks him off into the pool with a splash. Interior, video music awards, hallway, same. Our production assistant crashes through a stairwell door, spins her head, can't decide on a direction. Walkie spits. Sue. She answers. Go. Ryan says they switched rooms last minute. She's in room 25. She juggles her clipboard, scans it. West B, on the other side of the freaking world. On it. Better run. Will's up in five. The assistant spins and breaks into a run. Shit, shit, shit. Crashes back through the stairwell door. Exterior, Hollywood Hills Mansion, pool, same. Maria and Mark splash up out of the water. Laugh, kiss, Maria breaks off. Okay, we need to go inside now. One more kiss. I need to dry my hair. I'm the star of the show. She smoothly dives, glides to the ladder, climbs out, Venus emerging from the pool's mirrored surface. At the top, glances over her shoulder. Chop, chop. Interior, music video awards, West dressing room, same. The back of a woman's head, the same long honey hair as Maria. She's in an intense costume. A male makeup artist touches up her makeup. A heavy knock at the door. It opens to reveal the PA, out of breath. I'm sorry, Maria? The head doesn't turn, but the makeup artist rolls their eyes. Excuse me? Society made doors for a reason. Okay, but Maria's needed on stage, yeah, and we... Well, you maybe should have thought of that before you put us in the round mirror room. Sorry, the what? The last room had round mirrors. Round mirror, round face. Maria only works with square mirrors. He gives the woman's shoulder a squeeze, and she turns. The face looks just like Maria, but... It's not. This is Heather, Maria's double. Heather smiles apologetically before the makeup artist turns her chin back towards him. Fucker, sweetie. You're not going out there until you look like you blew a hoover. There you go. Do you love it? Heather looks at her ultra-glam reflection in the mirror, smiles. The poppy strains of Maria's hit song, Two of Everything, start up as interior, Hollywood Hills mansion, living room, moments later. Mark calls up the stairs, popcorn bowl in hand. It's starting. I'm coming, I'm coming. Maria comes running down the stairs, now sporting a black bobbed wig. She gives Mark a kiss at the bottom of the stairs. He ruffles her wig, smirking. Why the wig? I'm incognito tonight. Wouldn't want anyone to recognize me. She leads the way to the couch and plops down, gesturing for him to sit with her as the sounds of two of us rise. Oh my god, here we go. <sighs> Interior, MVA stage. A spot highlights a bare point on the stage. Other lights hit the point and overlap, turn, create the image of a rose petals on overlaid, turning slowly. The lights move apart, and the rose flower unfurls. Then, a spray of petals and smoke, and Heather stands in the center of the flower. Crowd applause. She smiles. Hair hangs in the air. The music cuts. Applause abates. Crowd intakes breath. Maria clicks her fingers. Loud music drops. She struts forward. Dancers appear out of nowhere, fall in step. The two of us. We should have known better. The two of us could be so much better. Interior, Hollywood Hills Mansion, living room. Moments later, song continues on TV. You look hot. Don't you dare. You have the real thing right here. Sure. Never seen Heather naked, though. You want to fuck her? Two Marias is better than one. Should I ask her? Really? Police laps in. Pervert? You can't even tell us apart. You can, too. See this? Insert on TV. Heather and her dancers nail a complex dance routine. Heather hitting a high note as she goes. You and I were meant to get along, but I want to cry when we get it wrong. You and I on the edge of it all. Hold me close, baby, when we start to fall. Back to scene. That's definitely Heather. You never hit that note live. She turns to him, amused. Fuck you! I'd have to be stupid to pick a double who was a worse singer than me, right? Smart. I should get a fake you, one that's more respectful. Impossible, I'm one of a kind. Babe, I could find ten more of you without even leaving this zip code. You are sweet, though, and it would be time-consuming to house train another, so stick around. I love it when you demean me. They kiss passionately. Maria peeks at the TV as applause breaks out. Insert on TV. Fans scream from the audience, holding up signs. 
We love you, Maria, Queen Maria, etc. On stage, Heather soaks it up. Her eyes shine, elated by the crowd. I love you all! Interior, Hollywood Hills Mansion, bedroom, morning. Heather's voice echoes over Maria waking up hungover in the lavish master bedroom of her home. She looks to Mark snoring beside her in the disheveled bedside table covered in booze and pills. Groaning, she gets oh. out of bed. All right. That was great. <laughs> that was really good. Okay. I, I like the song. I like the song. They actually played a, um, a full kind of peppy poppy version of that over the credit so that's that's cool i ooh, i i do have thoughts on that scene excuse me i would like to oh hello hello um let me in no 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 um okay is this gonna be the exact same also I, again i'm like the one <laughs> The one is, you know, I want to focus on Marissa. She was my favorite. John can fall by the wayside. Okay, read for scene one through nine. We'll go straight through. Over black. Final check in 20. Group three to the stage. Move okay, so it, this is looking like it's going to be the same thing. Um, in which, you know what, I'll talk over it. I'll talk over it. Backstage corridor, NBA award. Harry producer opens door into an empty dressing room. Fuck. Closes it. Paper on door reads Maria. Back okay, so Maria is a, a famous pop star. And Heather is her body double. So it's it's not a heist movie. It's from from the sounds of it. It sounded like Mr. Hessenberg was holding some kind of event. And he didn't think that Maria was gonna do it. But like, oh, you're doing it for the money. There's no shame in that. Okay. ready. Go check the second floor. Quit. Wheels up in twenty. On it. Jobs off. So I'm guessing. Again, I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna. I don't like speaking over it. That's the thing. I feel bad. I'm gonna guess. I can't. I can't remember which one they said was in the scene. That's the only issue. I'm gonna assume. I, again, for the sake of plot, so this is this is about a pop star and her body double. They look so identical that, you know, people can't tell them apart. They've got the body double performing at the MVAs as some kind of little, like, ooh, this'll be fun. You know, I can watch myself on stage, la-di-da. I think in terms of the plot, I think it would be more exciting if the body double went and did the event. And then maybe Mr. Hessenberg finds out about it and is pissed because, you know, I, I paid for the real deal and I got this body double. What the fuck? I think I think that would make slightly more sense from a plot standpoint. Mansion pool, same. The sparkling swimming pool of a palatial Hollywood estate. It's lit up for a party, but only... Also, it was, it was interesting to see Marissa sitting stock still again. He lounges at the poolside. Reminded me of Ambrosio. Long legs step up to the poolside. Over Mark. He opens his eyes. Nice. Ready for the show? Hell yes. Inside the show. Can't we just tape it? Are you kidding? I want to watch it live. Kicks him off into the pool with a splash. Also, it's, it's interesting. Also, that touching the chin, that's, um... That's John's move. She answers. Go. John was sat for most of this with a hand on his chin. She juggles her clipboard, scans it. So she's she's mixing them. Sometimes she sat she sat stock still, sometimes she sat like John. But what I was gonna say, it's interesting seeing the one act. In all of the other clips we've seen her in, she's been interacting with the actors, but not really acting. Kiss. I need to dry my hair on the start of the show. <laughs> she smoothly dives. I've got to be honest. I don't think the one is a particularly good actress. At the top, glances over her shoulder. There's something slightly awkward there. The back of a woman's head. The same long. And again, I'm talking about the character here, not the actor. The, the actress playing the one is doing a phenomenal job. But there's, there seems to be a, an awkwardness about the character, about the one. Excuse me. Society made doors for a reason. Okay, but Maria's needed on stage. Yeah, well, maybe you should have thought of that before you put us in the round mirror room. 
sorry, the what? The last room had round mirrors. Round mirror, round face. Maria only works with square mirrors. He gives the woman shoulder a squeeze. The PA looks in disbelief as she turns. The face looks just like Maria, but it's not. This is Heather, Maria's double. Heather smiles apologetically back before the makeup artist turns her chin back towards him. Welcome, oh, sweetie. You are not going out there until you look like you blew a hoop. Here you go. You love it. Heather looks at her ultra-glam reflection in the mirror, smiles. The poppy strains of Maria's hit song, Two of Us, start up as interior, Hollywood Hills mansion, living room, moments later. Mark calls up the stairs, popcorn bowl in hand. It's starting! I'm coming, I'm coming! Maria comes running down the stairs, now sporting a black bobbed wig. She gives Mark a kiss at the bottom of the stairs. He ruffles her wig, smirking. Why the wig? I'm incognito tonight. I didn't want anyone to recognize me. She leads the way to the couch and plops down, gesturing for him to sit with her as the sounds of two of us rise. Oh my god, here we go. Interior, NBA stage. A spot highlights a bare point on the stage. Other lights hit the point and overlap, turn, create the image of rose petals overlaid, turning slowly. The lights move apart and the rose flower unfurls. Then, a spray of petals and smoke, and Heather stands in the center of the flower. Crowd applause. She smiles. Hair hangs in the air. The music cuts. Applause abates. Crowd intakes breath. Maria crooks her fingers. Loud music drops. She struts forward. Dancers appear out of nowhere, fall in step. Two of us, we should have known better. The two of us, you'll be so much better. Interior, Hollywood Hills Mansion, living room, moments later. Song continues on TV. You look hot. Don't you dare, you have the real thing right here. Sure, never saw Heather naked though. No fuck. Two Marias is better than one. Should I ask her? Really? Clay slaps him. Pervert. Can't even tell us apart. Can't you see this? Insert on TV. Heather and her dancers nail a complex dance routine. Heather hitting a high note as she goes. You and I were meant to get along, but I want to cry when we get it all. You and I on the edge of it all. Pull me close, baby, when we start to fall. Back to scene. That's definitely Heather. You never hit that note live. She turns to him and mutes. Oh, I'm not. I'm not sure which version I prefer. M Marissa sounds a lot more confident. Also, ooh. I wanted to talk about that. I don't like how um, Maria is talking to her boyfriend there. That's real demeaning. That's real. Oh, the only reason that I, I won't. I, I would not stop dating you is because, oh, it'd be time consuming to train another. And there are there are ten more of you in this zip code alone. Like that's that's demeaning. Don't bring your partner down like that. Don't don't be doing that. I love it when you demean me. I admit it, if he has like a, a humiliation kink, then like he'll be enjoying that, but assuming he doesn't like don't don't demean your partner. On stage, Heather soaks it up. Her eyes shine, elated by the crowd. I love you all! Interior, Hollywood Hills Mansion, bedroom, morning. Heather's voice echoes over Maria, waking up hungover in the lavish master bedroom of her home. She looks to Mark, snoring beside her, and the disheveled bedside table covered in booze and pills. Groaning, she gets out of bed. Oh, that is... Madam, stop looking at the camera. That is significantly more awkward. I, just just to talk about the singing, I'm not sure which version I prefer because Marissa, she she has that confidence. She sounded very confident, like, yep, I know what I'm doing. I know what notes I'm hitting. Whereas the one, she has a much higher pitch. However, in, like, the, there was a line, oh, she nails a high note. And when I was listening to Marissa, I was like, what high note? I'm, I'm not particularly musically inclined, but I wouldn't call any of those notes high. At least with the ones version, whilst it did sound a, a bit shakier, at least it was high. And I was like, okay, there are high notes there. I, ooh. Now we want to go, yeah, okay. Ooh, let me back into the original. Okie doke. I, ooh. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. I was just starting to miss. Again from the beginning. 
Okay, let's just keep going from 18 and run through to the end of 24, so the whole night show sequence. Okay. The exterior of the night show, a line forming outside. Interior, the night show, green room, same. Gary paces a well-appointed green room on the phone. What do you mean she's not there? Did you check the pool? All right, I'll try her again. God damn it. He grabs a handful of grapes and eats them angrily off the bunch as he punches in Maria's phone number again. Interior, Maria's second apartment. Bedroom, intercut, phone buzzes. Mark and Maria in a wrecked bedroom. Mark groggily reaches for the phone, flips it, places it next to Maria. She sounds drunk and disoriented, and she licks it too. Hello. Maria, where the fuck are you? Hi, Bear Bear. I was just starting to miss you. We have been looking for you for hours. There's a PA currently climbing your garden. Well, that's not gonna do any good. I'm not there. Where are you? I'm in my secret place. The one you'll never find. Mark giggles. Are you on drugs right now? Have you had anything to eat? Maria squints at the bedside table. I've been enjoying Percocet a la vodka all morning. With friends like these, who needs food? Maria, for fuck's sake, take a cold shower and get down here. It's the night show, okay? I'd kill myself to get you sitting slap. Too wasted. Christ. Call Heather. Don't be stupid. She's your body double. She can't do TV. She did the MDAs. Gary winces. You're gonna give me a heart attack. I believe in her. She hangs up the phone and rolls off the bed. End intercut. God damn it. Gary tosses the grapes back on the plate and makes the call. Hey, Heather, sweetheart. Can we take a break? Sure. Uh, Simon, you want to give us another round of coffees? Back in ten. Oh. Well, that's, that's very intimate. She's putting her head on his shoulder. Um, I just quickly want to see, who was it who asked for a break? Who's, who's asking that? Can we take a break? Okay, it's Amy. Sure. Uh, Simon, you want to give us another round of coffees? Back in 10? Yeah, I was going to say, Amy, Amy doesn't look so good. I wonder, I don't. Then there's the question, is this even Amy? I think the other one, the, the first scene where you have um, Marissa back, I think that was Amy because it was Amy in the secret scene. I can't tell because at, at some point Amy gets taken over by the other. Has that happened yet? Or it, it could be the fact that, um, okay, that is very intimate. That's, that's not, it, it could just be platonic. It could be platonic. I'm inclined to say that this is romantic. In which case, maybe, maybe she's a bit concerned by how much time Marissa and, um, John are spending together. Maybe this is like, a, I, I need some comfort. I need to know I'm I'm your girl in all of this. You've got me reading the, the stage directions and this, that and t'other. But like, I, I need a bit more. I, I need a little something else here. Um. Okay. And again, just to talk about the film. So it, it seems like, it seems like Maria is a messy pop star. You know, she's got this, she's got second slot at the night show, I think it was. And she's been taking Percocet a la vodka all morning. Gary didn't seem to know that he was, I'm going to assume that Gary is her agent. He said, he said he was the one who got her the second slot. So he sounds like her agent. He didn't know that it was Heather at the MVAs. And he's having to ask Heather to do this TV show. Oh, okay. So Maria, Maria's sloppy. Maria, Maria, she's, she's living that, that high life of drugs and alcohol. And, you know, it, I, I've got to be honest, from the things we've seen, Maria doesn't seem all that nice. You know, she's, she's got this, this chance, this interview, whatever it is. 
she's like, yeah, I don't want to do it. I, I want to do drugs and get wasted. I don't care how much hard work Gary has put into this. I'm going to have someone else do it, but they'll think I'm doing it. Like, she, it, it seems like she's not really dealing with the consequences of her actions. You know, as, as long as Heather can do it, then I'll look good and I can just be wasted and high. I, ooh. Okay. Now, you know what? I'm, I'm a little short on time today, so I'm gonna bring this episode to a close right here. In the next one, we have more table reads, but until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.